Hello everyone, welcome back, and today we are covering the Lich Yard for the Any% percent route for the Bounding Soul tutorial series. Now, last time we were in the Lich Yard, uh, we were there pretty early on. It's actually kind of interesting, the two routes. If you were to compare them side by side, uh, both of the routes have a stage where they fight basically low percent with that weapon. All they have is Rail Mail and an unupgraded Judgment Rush. And uh, now, quite the opposite, we are no longer as weak as we were in Explodatorium. We have an extra bit of Darkness, we have an upgraded Bounding Soul, and we are going to blaze through the stage because we no longer have to do any of that side work collecting money, grabbing skulls. So there's a bunch of new tricks, there's a bunch of... Um, rooms that have changed because we no longer have to, you know, go looking around for stuff. And, uh, there's also, of course, the very much appreciated quick kill on Phantom Striker that we get to look forward to. Uh, a lot of these rooms, again, haven't really changed up all that much, and some of them are still kind of preference on what you want to do, really only saving, like, a frame or two here or there. Uh, but there are key pointers, there are some things to remember. Oh, and <laughs> how could I forget? Uh, shoutouts to Azuleg, who, uh, of course, had to find probably the most terrifying trick that has been included in this game. <laughs> also, not to throw anyone off who's uh, watching this run, but uh, I did uh, I did have a couple of mistakes that were a little sloppy, and since I want this first run to look as clean as possible, I decided to go back and edit it with a, with a splice from a second attempt. That would be the point of this guide series, though. It's supposed to be uh, as much of a good example as possible, and I hope you're ready for this one. Because this is actually not as hard as it looks, it's just extremely scary. <laughs> ah, but enough about that. Now we're going on to the real show of the Lich Yard. We've got a new spicy kill here on Phantom Striker. I suggest you get your hands into a comfortable position where you can mash, because that's literally the opening of this fight, is just a ton of mashing your relic button. Uh, you can get a little, um... A little variance in the amount of damage you actually net on him, and you can still get the quick kill. Uh, it just depends. It's more important that your spacing on the last two shots uh, and your and your corner juggle really deals a ton of damage to him uh, to make up for any any missed hits on the first half of the fight. Uh, friendly reminder: at this point, you really don't need any more money, so there's literally no reason to go out of your way for extra cash. No hidden wall gold, no breaking checkpoints. Don't worry about it. Now there is a small time save here if you can do two lighter hops. Don't worry about it if you can't, it's really friggin' difficult so I wouldn't go crazy over it. Now this is new, and this was found by Tolu. With a well lined up first shot and then a slice, the first frog goes down really quickly and then if you can get really high up on this ledge, it's really favorable. Uh, cut your animation with a soul toss, you'll actually hit him with the other soul as well and you won't even have to worry about him. So the old Judgment Rush strat is uh, not as optimal. Um, you could still go for it, but yeah, this is really cool. It's not too difficult either. Just keep in mind, there's a tiny, tiny bit of RNG with like that frog's jump, but like most of the angles of these two soul shots will cover that up. Now keep in mind that, again, we're not going out of our way for extra money, for extra skulls or anything, so you want to just keep going straight as fast as you can. Now this wall, you'll actually want to cut it twice, and this is so that you can actually uh, keep riding without bonking into the wall. I like to slow down afterwards just a little bit, pull back so that I can actually land on this ledge and space my jump accordingly to clear this frog without getting caught on the lip of anything. So let's take a look at this uh, whole room here all together at full speed. And ladder, two hops, and then one soul, cut the ledge, another soul, gets rid of the frog, two cuts, back up a little bit, good jump, and we're out. Now for this room, uh, a new way of getting through has been found. There's a, another way that involves a double dash for low percent, however that one's basically impossible, it's ridiculous. This is pretty easy, uh, and sometimes you accidentally cut that guy? Uh, it's not a big deal if that happens. Basically, alternatively, what you're looking for is actually this, where you're gonna grind, jump, tap left, and cut, and you'll damage boost off of him immediately. So let's take a quick look at that room again at full speed. Dash, jump, turn around, and you're out. Everyone's favorite, the dark room. I found this nifty little strat where after you wake up the frog, if you get a nice deep jump and cut in on him, uh, there are still enough frames for you to be able to actually uh, do an up dash. This has to do with um, enemies not having a damaging hitbox so long as you're dealing damage to them. So you can quickly uh, get up to that first ledge, and then once you've done this room enough times, you practice it enough, you'll know how to jump over all of these gaps at full speed. It's really not difficult. So this room without the slowdown. 
pretty quick. Now this room is slightly different thanks to the inclusion of the Banding Soul. Tolu found this one out. You just jump into the pit, uh, grind off this small darkness ledge, and then cut the corner with a soul shot, jump, and then do a dash attack off of him. That'll quickly get him out of the way. I like to up dash on this Beto, and then shortly after I start my grind, I Judgment Rush. It'll automatically target the uh, first skeleton. The second one won't even spawn because of the way you target him, and then you can just leave the room very easily. Now the next relevant thing to talk about is uh, this checkpoint here. By holding left as you climb the ladder, when you jump you'll already be facing left, so all you have to do is hit it and then hold right, you'll automatically swing at the checkpoint and then go into the next room. And that's a, purely a safety strat, but it's still a good strat. <laughs> It's basically entirely free to grab, which uh, I very much advocated grabbing that checkpoint during the uh, tournament that happened recently. Uh, especially with this new trick that was found, where um, Azulike -like found that uh, double dashing really was clearly not prevalent enough in the run. <laughs> so, uh, here's the setup for it. As you climb up on this last ledge here, you want to give yourself just a short moment to actually start the next grind. Don't keep holding right or you'll just clear the thing entirely. and then. Please practice this angle, because once you get it, it's actually just mashing. You just down, up, and then just keep mashing. If you got that first double dash, then the last one should line up for one more down and then up. It's really spooky, but trust me, you'll be fine. Uh, if you are not fine, for whatever reason, just start climbing the wall, jump, and get an up dash. I've done it before, it's not that hard to react to. So let's see that again at full speed. And again, the beginning part, really not that different from how we used to do it. But here, get your spacing right, down, up, down, up down up. Now as for Phantom Boy, Phantom Striker, yes, this fight is certainly a thing now. We're gonna start the fight by mashing your Judgment Rush as hard as you can. It's just barely possible to get this first hit in before he gains the invincibility from charging up. You want to make sure you have uh, Bounding Soul equipped and immediately start firing at least two against the wall and then two behind him. This really works out well in terms of spacing. Just walk up to a slash, jump, and then try and get two dash attacks on him. Uh, some weird shenanigans happened in this footage, and I actually whiffed on my first dash because of the way he jumped. So just so you know, there's going to be a slight variance on the amount of damage you deal to Phantom Striker, but ultimately, if you manage to push him to this invincibility phase uh, before he teleports away even once, you're looking good. He should have four or less health left. Um, do as much damage to him as you can before he disappears, and then take... One more damage boost to set up for the last set of shots. You want to get slightly towards the left side of this arena here. As he starts to drop down, fire one, do a short hop, fire another. You want to be slightly in front of him, and this will juggle the Bounding Souls against the wall behind him. You'll deal three hits, and they'll deal the remaining damage to his back. So here's your whole fight at full speed. Mashing Judgment Rush. Get your souls ready. One, two, three, four. Slash, bounce, bounce. Take your damage boost, get as many hits on him as you can. I've brought him down to three full hearts. Well spaced shots, and he's dead. Can't thank you enough, Patwa, for finding out all of these uh, bounding soul kills. They're so ridiculous, and they make the run so much more enjoyable. That's about it for this episode. Next time we'll be covering the second memory sequence, the Memory of Conflict. So until then, stay spooky, and thank you for watching.